And so one week tonight, Americans will be dusting themselves off after a nasty midterm election cycle. It's possible not even all the results will be in yet. This is their election, but our neighbors' issues are never theirs alone. So what should we expect? To answer that, you need a guide. So how about Mark McKinnon? He of the hat and impressive resume, once a media advisor for both Democratic and Republican campaigns. Give me a little hat one-on-one. -on -one. What's popular these days? Just look for the hat. <laughs> <laughs> like your hat. Nice hat. Great hat. This is your trademark. You're going to put this on? There you go. Now, host of the circus, inside the greatest political show on earth, as the tagline goes. Curiously true right now, from QAnon candidates in the mainstream to election deniers trying to win elections. To decode it, we started by talking of the one politician not in the running. Would you say Donald Trump is still the most important politician or re Republican in particular right now? 100%. I mean, I, I can't really remember any politician in American history, at least not in mine, that's been so dominant, at least in his party. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he, despite all the baggage that he carries, he just has an, uh, you know, a base of support that will not wilt no matter what he does. And, and that's powerful, particularly in the Republican primaries. You know, I think about somebody like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who is so often um, uh, portrayed as, as a bully uh, and someone on the fringe, but it's someone whose influence seems to be growing, does it not? Uh, the, the interesting thing is that she was seen as a fringe candidate of the Republican Party until now. Now the Republican Party is moving to her. This is remarkable. She's not even a, a, a one-term congressman yet. She hasn't even served two years. And if we are to say in God we trust, how do we murder God's creation in the womb? I have nothing to apologize for, and I'm not, I don't have, I, what we need to focus on is what's affecting the American people. And now she will be in a position of not just influence, but dominant influence. I mean, she will be in, in you know, have a big hand in investigations, and she's already said she wants to impeach Biden, she wants to impeach the Attorney General, she wants to impeach the head of Homeland Security, and that's just for, for beginners. Why? Well, uh, because they've tapped into an anger and resentment uh, in the American electorate. That this is largely people feeling that the future has passed them by in America, that they, their quality of living has gone down. They're afraid of change. They're afraid of outsiders, of immigrants moving in and changing their way of life, taking their jobs, diminishing their paychecks. When I hear you talk about the notion of people uh, feeling like they aren't heard, that they're not doing well, that they're afraid of outsiders. I, I, I think of the misinformation around the Second World War, the, the, the old propaganda tactics. You make the majority population feel like they're the victim. You identify a group that you can blame for all the ills, and you completely turn people into upside down land. Is this just not that playbook? Yeah, it is. I mean, that, there's, that's a very good historical parallel, uh, unfortunately. And uh, at the root of the problem here is, is disinformation. I mean, we have a situation in our country now where more than two thirds of the Republican Party have bought into Donald Trump's big lie that the election was stolen, that there was election fraud, despite an absolute absence of any evidence whatsoever. That's so dangerous for our country because really at the root of any democracy, the most important thing is the peaceful transfer of power. And January 6, 2020, we did not have that. I always grew up looking at American politics that the memories are short and that it's really sort of the month-ish before an election where people start paying attention. Are people still talking about the abortion ruling? Is it, is it still likely to be a thing that motivates a vote one way or the other? Well, not like, not to the extent that Democrats had hoped. I mean, I, I think Democrats are now wishing that the election had been a month or two months ago when that mm -hmm. issue was more salient. But to your point, voters are kind of thinking about what's, what's happening right now. And right now they're feeling economic pain, they're feeling inflationary pressure, and in a lot of communities they feel like crime is on the rise. So the Democrats had this very curious strategy early on, and I say that as an out outsider. It was Okay, they are going to, through PACs and super PACs, support the most Trumpian of candidates in the Republican Party 
in, in the primaries so that that person will win and probably won't win in the midterms. Is that strategy coming back to blow up in their faces? Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, it's a, a strategy that uh, was very short-sighted. <laughs> And now uh, I, I think that Democrats are going to really regret that decision because in a lot of places, including and especially Arizona, they ended up with Kerry Lake. It is not impossible to protect our kids at school. They act like it is. Nancy Pelosi, well, she's got protection when she's in D.C. Apparently her house doesn't have a lot of protection. <laughs> but Kerry Lake is not only likely to win the governorship, I think she's going to be on the short list for at least VP of the Republican ticket in 2024 and maybe even the top of the ticket herself. They put money behind Carrie Lake thinking that she was the more extreme. She's an election denier. Uh, but then again, you know, everybody on the ballot in Arizona is an election denier. I mean, if, if you have a, a country where election denial becomes in a, in a, in a state like Arizona the norm, how do you govern that country? It, listen, it feels existential to me. It scares the hell out of me. Uh, when we can't have when, when you have a whole, you know, a large block of people and a lot of candidates who say, if I win, great. If I lose, it's fraud, period. I mean, Steve Bannon did that in face of the Brazilian elections. And so Donald Trump said it. Carrie Lake is saying it now. Uh, and so it's really eroding the very fabric of our democracy. And I fear, I fear that in this election, we, we're going to have some, some examples where candidates just cry fraud. And people have gotten used to that and they adopt it. The part of me that, that looks at uh, the shrinking role of democracies around the rest of the world, uh, more people live under autocracy than democracy. Um, that's new, right? And I just... We, just... Thought it, we never thought it'd happen here. We thought this would be the last place that that would happen. But I am a prisoner of hope, so I'm going to keep pushing this big rock up the steep hill. All right. And we'll keep an eye on you as well. Mark, thanks very much, eh? That's it, sir.